Good evening, everyone. This is Pradeep Mal, Ambassador of Change from Getty, the Global Education and Training Institute of Lucknow, India. We are the premier institution for training teachers and principals in India in several parts of the world. And we have many in-service and pre-service programs. For more information on this, please go to 740-840-1000. Right now, you are on our disruptive education platform provided to us by our mentor, Dr. Sunita Gandhi. And on this platform, we have met with and interacted with more than 1,500 educators from India and all over the world. And this evening, we have for you Mr. Sheng Bao. He's a professor in the University of KwaZulu, Natal, Peter Mar Maritzburg, in South Africa. He was born in Inner Mongolia, China, in 1959. He has done an MSc and a PhD in maths from New Zealand. He has worked in several universities in China and South Africa as professor of mathematics. He reviews mathematical reviews of the American Mathematical Society and is a member of several mathematical societies. He is very fond of writing and hiking. He will be speaking to us today on hands-on experiments in mathematical learning. Good evening, sir. Welcome and over to you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Pradeep Mall. It is an honor to be presenting something here. And uh, this is just to give uh, a good evening, uh, colleagues for, uh, who are listening or viewing. I should say greetings because here it is early afternoon. Uh, I would like to just give uh, an, some view about uh, learning mathematics through hands, not just brains, but uh, through hands for the young people, even starting from toddlers. And uh, the title is Learning Mathematics Through Direct Experiment. Uh, the general mentality in uh, human social reality is that mathematics is difficult to learn and school children starting from primary school, many of them have difficulties and uh, they probably reject mathematics, hate it. And uh, at the end, majority of the kids are unsuccessful very few will uh, come, uh, come to our universities for further tertiary mathematics. And uh, this can be, uh, story can be different. Uh, the main uh, reason for this happening all over the world is that young children are saturated by great repository of information online, everywhere, outside. Uh, it is very difficult to enjoy a beautiful meal after when you are, you know, when you had a full meal already. This is the story there. And then uh, this can be remedied by young people just putting their hands on, not just brain putting their hands on some enjoyable play or, and I'm only using uh, marbles today, the glass marbles. Mathematics was usually, is usually advocated as a uh, as rigorous activity of human intelligent, intelligence. And uh, even university professors mis give a misinformation on this by emphasizing the rigor and emphasizing the great brain activity instead of direct sensual experience when uh, people are learning mathematics. 
So the question is, can a child learn mathematics through plays and games using his or her hand? My uh, experience is yes, and uh, I never taught younger children, but this can be taught to use, this method can be used in school, as even kindergartens. So we can do a lot about mathematics through hands and not just by through brains. And the experience is uh, sensual, and then sensual experiences are, is, uh, are lacking in modern day life because everybody has these handheld devices, everybody has access to internet, and then it's usually visual, not through touch. I used to consider only a few examples with ladies and gentlemen today using marbles and blocks. Only the glass marbles and blocks or even Greek paper, if you would like. The easy question is that uh, do children not enjoy playing with marbles or blocks? My experience is uh, that they do. This is a set of marbles in a plastic bottle. Sizes are different, and I'm using uh, usually marbles of the same size, and sometimes even not identifiable. They are all the same marbles. Let us uh, think back uh, in our primary schools where the multiplication table is taught the multiplication of single digit positive integers. We were taught to memorize that table. We were taught to say, uh, memorize one times one is one, one times two is two, two times two is four, one times three is three, two, two times three is six, three times three is nine. We were taught to memorize that diagonal uh, multiplication table for single digit positive integers. And these can all be achieved without pain through handling marbles. Let us have a look at it. It can be fun. So this is one marble, one of one batch of one marble is one. This is what it says. You can touch it and this is one, two is two, two, two is four. You see children can arrange this in this manner and then count it one by one. And you can do this uh, if you have a sufficiently large set of marbles. You can do it with uh, blocks or grid paper. Let us look at these. One, three, three, two, three, six. Three, three is nine. For four, we have this multiplication experience. And you can handle, you can easily see that you can handle marbles in order to really have not just a brain memory, but first hand touch by their hands. You can use, of course, blocks or grid paper. If you have enough number of uh, marbles, then you can do the row for five and row for six and row for seven, and it ends at row for nine. Because as soon as a young child masters single digit multiplication, after that, there's a very simple rule to multiply any two positive integers of any number of digits. The rule is just single digit multiplication in conjunction with carrying, what is called carrying. School teachers know this all. Is this all we can do about uh, do using marbles? I'm don't, I don't think so. My uh, example today will give you idea that this can lead to some uh, 
mathematics in depth. The most important advantage of uh, marble handling, uh, learning through direct experience, is that it can lead to true mastery by the young children and uh, genuine learning outcome. I think this is more important than going into deeper mathematics. But indeed, we can go into deeper mathematics. This handling will lead to good questions. In mathematics, good questions always trigger good progress. And we can actually proceed into deeper and higher mathematics using just marbles. Let us look at this uh, square array of, uh, you have a square container in which you put 25 marbles, and then you put a divider here and a divider there. Now you see that uh, this is from the multiplication table. This is, of course, this whole thing is five times five is 25, but here we have three times three here, and there we have two times two. And then here we have twice, of two times three. What is this? This gives you five squared is equal to three plus two squared, which gives you three squared plus two times the product of the two, twice of the product of the two, plus some of the squares of the two members. This is the complete square formula, the prototype of it. Of course, this is about positive integers and you can you can uh, put 100 by 100 and you have 10,000 marbles and then you divide anywhere you like. So long as you have left top corner is a square, the two sides are equal. Then we have the uh, com complete square formula for positive integers through direct experience, a direct experiment. And the complete square formula, which, which is taught in school, in uh, secondary school is a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus two ab plus b. Here, a, b are, let us say any real number, but actually this a and b can be any member of a commutative ring with identity element. But here, jumping from positive integers to real numbers, there's immediately one question that will arise by the young kids, young children. They would ask, "We, this, I think I can experience that this will be true for positive integers, but how about rational numbers? How about real numbers? So these are good questions, in my opinion, by the learners. If the learners are asking this kind of question, they should be really encouraged to progress in mathematics because they are now asking, generalizing this complete square formula for from positive integers to real numbers, actually to complex numbers even. In fact, the gener most general generalization of this formula is in a commutative ring with identity element. That is where the general generality, proper generality boundary is. So this can be all done in through in these uh, number systems. These are examples of rings, commutative rings with the uh, identity elements. Commutativity is uh, with regard to the multiplication, which is denoted by a dot. It is automatically, these are commutative with regard to addition, there's no problem. And uh, in addition, we have commutativity regarding the multiplication. And there's also another, the ninth axiom is distributivity of the multiplication over addition. So here the medium generality arises. The children can actually capture this simply by measuring the side of a square until this point is reached. This is your A and then measuring that, which is your B and then you have A plus B squared. So they can easily understand that this can generalize to real numbers, positive real numbers, because real numbers come out as length and their negatives. So this is a marble which is placed inside a not ideal circle, but this is a pan containing marbles. And then if you put all, put my marble so that you fill this pan up, just one layer, and then you ask your kid, even four-year-old, let her count the marbles appearing along the perimeter 
and then put the ruler along a diameter and ask her to count what is how many are on the diameter. So let me uh, give you another better diagram. This is what I'm saying. Of course, there are mar you can put marbles in there, which are unnecessary unless you're looking at the area. But now you count your kit counts along the perimeter 44 of these marbles. If you don't believe it, me just go back and count. I did it with the latex, so it is exactly 44. Now, how many are along the diameter? Along the diameter, I have exactly 14. So if you divide the number of marbles along the perimeter by the number of marbles along this diameter, approximately this is diameter, 44 over 14 is 22 over 7. This was a celebrated many thousand year old uh, estimate of the number circumference number, which is the circumference diameter ratio. Unfortunately, in English language, they know this number only as pi. This is not pi. This is a good approximation of pi. English people don't understand what is meant by circumference diameter ratio, but they, they know the number is pi and which actually stops further progress of mathematics. If you know it is the ratio of one length with respect to the other, then you can actually do further mathematics from here. So the children can obtain 22 over 7 through that marble handling, which is a good approximation of pi. This gives you 3.414, many thousand years old. I always call this number circumference diameter ratio. Of course, I'm, uh, I do continuous research in this as well. If you're not looking at a circle, but looking at some other object, which has a circumference, which has a diameter, so long as you can measure distance, that those concepts can be there. And then you divide one length by the other, you have the ratio of that object. Only it happens that when it is a circle, perfect circle, then it comes out as pi. For other objects, it comes out somewhere near three. So new mathematical truths can be discovered through handling marbles. For example, prime numbers. So if you look at your multiplication table and then you have enough number of marbles and then you try, say you have seven marbles, the only way of putting seven marbles in a rectangular array is just one row. You don't have any other. One row means it is either one to seven or seven ones. And five is five has also this property, three has this property, two has this property, but not four or six. Four, you can put it in one row of four and two rows of two, or four rows of uh, ones and uh, two rows of two. Six, you can put it in one row of six, two rows of three, three rows of two, and six rows of ones. But for some of these numbers of marbles, you cannot do other than putting it in just one row. So if the number of marble is, you can arrange, uh, arrange your marble by hand, it has only one row, you cannot really put it in any other rectangle, then that is the definition of prime number. This is a very deep mathematical concept, but you can actually discover, a four-year-old can discover this through handling marbles. And some of the marbles are, some of the numbers of marbles are very good. You can put it in a square array. The number of rows is exactly equal to the number of marbles in each row. Those integers we call squares. One, three, uh, one, four, nine, 16, and so on, 25. And uh, many number series and their sum formula can be obtained by handling marbles. This time is not. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can be entertained with a semester course on this kind of direct experience. Mathematics learned through direct experience, experiments. Or which uh, only uses a few types of objects like marbles, blocks, or toys, or tools. 
Thank you very much for your attention. Is the more? Good evening, everyone, once again. And thank you, sir, for that very interesting talk on hands-on experiments in mathematics learning. Uh, very, very important that everybody gets on to these things because this is experiential learning and uh, a great, of great benefit uh, to teachers. Uh, and before we leave, I request you to watch our detox of our disruptive uh, literacy movement by Global Dream, an initiative by Dr. Sunita Gandhi since 2014. This is to ensure everyone's participation by a people's movement in helping India achieve total foundational literacy and numeracy. Basically, each one teach one, and those of us who should be teaching more than one should be doing it to ensure the closing of this gap between those of us who are fortunate to have got a good education and those who have not been. So we have many talks on this every day. And for more information on this, on the talks that you would like to listen into, please go to 740-840-1000. So thank you, sir, once again for that talk on hands-on experiments in mathematics learning. Good evening and goodbye. See you again tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you.